G'day, my name is Udeman. Welcome to Full Disclosure, a series of interviews with game devs by a gamer who is also a game dev. As per the series title, Full Disclosure, I have backed this game on Kickstarter. I'm talking today to Dave Jones from the Reflex FPS team. Uh, they've recently released uh, their game on Kickstarter. It's called Reflex. Um, it's a first-person shooter. It's probably in the sub-genre of fast twitch or um, CPMA kind of games. For those that aren't familiar, that's sort of like Quake 3. Um, so, yeah, Dave, tell me about Reflex in your own words. What what kind of game are you actually going for? Was I right in describing as I did? Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, we're an arena first-person shooter, which generally means a FPS that's decided to completely disregard realism and just go with whatever's the most fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, in that in that extent, so the core the core gameplay mechanic for those people that aren't familiar with this kind of FPS is, um, and maybe even not with with Quake Three, so to speak. So you're running around, you're shooting other people. It's it's less so much of it's not so much like your Call of Duties or your Battlefields, is it? It's more that you're sort of running around an arcade style thing, and it's just run and gun. Pretty much, um, you know, you spawn, you grab some weapons, and then after that, it's pretty much kill other people more than they kill you. It's yep. a simplistic kind of game, except you can get a lot of depth from it um, at the sort of higher level competitive play. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed that there has actually been a bit of a pickup. I mean, I'd, I used to play Quake 3 years ago, and it had only been recently that I'd come across the whole CPMA scene, and um, then someone had actually told me about Reflex, and I, I looked at it, and I thought, wow, these guys are sort of... They're bringing it into the uh, 21st century, so to speak. So um, on that note, I see that it's got a bit of a robotic... Uh, theme to it was that was that the look you guys are going for you're going to keep it all sort of futuristic and sort of robots and stuff well the characters are designed to basically be as different as possible we've got the human character which is going to be what you and your teammates are and then you've got the robot character which is what people have seen and that will be anyone you're supposed to be shooting will be the robot and this was so that they all had a very different sounds, very different silhouettes, and you could just really quickly tell, should I be shooting this person with a rocket launcher? Actually, that's really cool. So, yeah, so you can clearly tell at a glance who the good guys and who the bad guys are. Yep. That's amazing. That's, that's, that's actually pretty good because I, I do find that a lot of first-person shooters, half the time you spend that split second you know, trying to decide, do I actually shoot this guy or not, and by that time you're already dead. Yep. Well, it's getting rid of that split second of hesitation that was the point of it. Um, I think a lot of our fans crucify us if you couldn't immediately tell the difference between the uh, two different factions. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that that's kind of an aesthetic sort of uh, thing that appeals to this particular kind of hardcore gamer that are into these kind of FPS. Um, what was what was your inspiration to make these games? I mean, did you look back at things like Quake Three and the you know the the things that have been on since since Warsaw and things like that? Or well, I I think all of us on the team have always been huge Quake fans, and I was part of the development team for the CPM. But, um, Know, 10 years ago onwards or so. Oh, but, um, okay. So, yeah, that was pretty much what we immediately went for. We started on Reflex. Oh, yeah, no. Well, it seems like you've actually, yeah, you've, you've done a good job. I mean, the, the reports that I've heard back, I've seen you've got yourself a, a Reddit forum set up and you've been quite good on Twitter with the feedback from players and stuff like that. And I know that there's one or two people that are sort of really, really promoting it quite well and they seem to be quite excited about it. So, yeah, it's, it seems like you've um, at least appeased the uh, the people who are enthusiasts in that particular category. Um, so, yeah, so you mentioned that you were working on CPMA um, probably around 10 years ago or so. How long have you been working on Reflex? Um, Reflex has been going for a little bit over a year now, I think. I don't know, I'd have to... I could check our... Um version control and find out <laughs> no that's all right no, that's all right that's pretty good sure. though i mean but, yeah uh, yeah i think it's been i think it's been about 18 months or something um, oh wow yeah you've made a lot of progress then um how many how many people you got working on the team uh well we've got the three core meta, which is me doing um game design and miscellaneous monkey work uh ben does all of the art uh phil does all of the programming okay so are you uh you're all in australia uh, or also are you got, across the world or 
Uh, we're all in Australia. We're kind of dotted up and down the East Coast. None of us in the same city. So everything's done by Skype, which can be a nightmare, such as right now, Skype's not behaving itself very well. So No, that's, that's a totally okay. Yeah, every now and then you drop out, but then it catches up. So, I mean, that's, I mean, that's modern technology for you. Um, so my next question is, so you, you've been doing this for about 18 month, months or so. Um, looking at it, it looks quite professional. You haven't used an engine, though. You've actually built this thing from scratch, yes? Yes. Well, Phil's built this thing from scratch. Um, that's why it works. Um, but yeah, all from the ground up, made for reflex. Um, so we could get you know, everything we needed exactly as we wanted it. No sort of bloat, nothing you know, below our standards or anything like that. So yeah, like, yeah it's, it's yeah. coming along really well. The, I mean, the, pro, the programmer part of me thinks, oh my God, that's a really, really big, massive task. And at the same time, I just look at it in awe and think you guys have done really well. Was there any sort of, I mean, what was the impetus behind you guys just saying, look, we're going to do this from scratch versus, say, using one of the existing engines? Well, when we began the project, we had a look at all of the other engines which were around and pretty much everyone find at least one flaw with it that we sort of wondered, you know, how are we going to fix this? Do we have access to all of that code we need and everything like that? So eventually we had, by the time we uh, fixed up these other engines to do what we wanted and learned our way around the code base and stuff, we probably could have just written it ourselves. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I can, so I can see what you're saying. that's what we did. Yeah, no, that's excellent. So, um, from from that standpoint, I mean, what advantages or maybe even what disadvantages have you come across in doing it yourself? I mean, you, you've mentioned there that it, it's obviously if you want to do some fine tuning, it's better for you to do it from scratch. But I mean, looking back, is there certain things that you think, wow, we've bitten off a fair bit here, and it's you know this is sort of going to be pretty complicated, or you know, or have you decided that this was actually the right decision from the outset? Oh, we're we're pretty confident we've done the right thing. Um... It's always easy to look at something like um, you know Unreal Engine 4 and think it's so pretty and developed and you know, sometimes we'd love to have some of those features already made for us <laughs> instead of having to do them ourselves. But no, I, th- I think we're really happy with how the engine's coming along. It's got the feel we want. It's got the performance we want. Um, yeah, we're, we've never really doubted we made the right decision. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I wouldn't say you had either. I think you've done a really, you've, you've made the right decision in terms of the kind of game that you're making and it's come together really well. So um, on, on, that, on that vein, do you, I mean, would you recommend to beginner game devs that they start from scratch or is maybe that too much to bite off to start with and maybe they should start with an engine? I think the general advice given when someone says, should I write my own engine? The answer is always no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think more accurately, it would probably be if you have to ask that question, the answer is no. I mean, there's some really good engines out there these days, like Unreal 4 and Unity and everything else. They're, they're an incredible tool for anyone starting out. Yeah, no, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. Because, and, yeah, I do find... You know, there's, there's no need to... Sorry. No, go for it. I was just going to say, I, I do find that you get a lot of the beginners, especially students, they go, well, look, you know, we'll do it from scratch because that's the way we've got to do it. But if they've got no prior experience, they sort of don't realize how big that task can be. But clearly, you guys have that experience. And so you doing it from scratch is a completely different ballpark. Yeah, I'd, I'd say. I mean, even as, even as a beginner, it's going to be value in you know, writing some systems from scratch just so you know what's going on, how they work um, under the hood and everything. And so, yeah, so back to the but, actual... Um, yeah, yeah, an engine is a big job. Yeah, so not to, not to bore the gamers out there too much because they're just rolling their eyes going, oh, come on, tell me more about the game. So in terms of the actual game itself, what has been... Uh, like, how's it been received so far yourselves? I mean, I've, I've seen good feedback from it, but how are you guys finding that the people are picking it up? Um, really well. We've got a sort of dedicated little... And this going on. The press has all been pretty positive about it. Um, yeah, we're, we're really happy with how it's been received. We just want more people actually playing it. Uh, unfortunately, it's not quite ready for that yet, but, yeah, we can't wait. Yeah, no, I, I saw that on your Kickstarter. You've got a couple of different tiers there. You've got your you know, your usual alphas and your betas, and you've also got some really, really, really early access with the prototype stuff, so I dare say you'll get a lot of feedback during that. I'm sure we'll get more than we know what to do with. 
And this is the thing. It's about keeping the, the punters happy. And on that note, what has been the most common question you've received so far? That would definitely be, can I have a build? Um, <laughs> yeah, everyone wants us to start playing, don't they? We we get multiple times a day by people who want to play it. Just can you send me a copy? And unfortunately, the answer's often got to be no because we're not very user friendly at the moment with these bugs. We need to sort out. Now, if Kickstarter is successful, then a couple of months of full time development will get all of that sorted out. We can get the first prototype built into people's hands and they can start playing. Yeah, no, I think you guys have taken the right approach because a lot of gamers don't necessarily realise how much work goes into making a game and so you can't necessarily let everyone in because there's more questions that get raised than you've actually got time to answer while you're actually making the game. Yeah, well, that could very easily happen. Like At the moment, we've got a few bugs with um, ATI cards simply because we don't have enough money to buy an ATI to test and fix these problems. And... You know, if we put out the build we have now, we'd immediately get hundreds and hundreds of reports from ATI users saying, you know, I get this problem, which will take us weeks to answer when we could just fix the bugs in a night. So, Yeah, no, but I think, yeah, giving, giving, the, giving um, the punters something early and often is probably the best way to get feedback. But, yeah, it sort of has to be a measured approach, like you're saying, just so you're not overwhelmed. So, again, I, I, with regards to the questions that the people have been asking who are playing it, what's the weirdest question you've received? The weirdest question would probably be if we're going to support Oculus Rift, which if we ever actually got our hands on the hardware, I'm pretty sure I'd quickly bash something out and see how it worked. But I suspect the result would be it would make people feel very, very sick with the kind of speed and style of our movement. Yeah, I can imagine you just sort of jump off a jump off a platform somewhere, turn around to rail someone doing a 360, and by the time you've actually landed, you've already spewed up or something. Yeah, pretty much. I think um, bunny hopping and virtual reality are going to be a good combination. Oh, no. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Dave. Um, it's been a really good uh, insight into the development that you've been doing there for Reflex, and it looks like you've got a successful project on your hands. Just one last question before you go. Yep. Would you agree that gaming is a party and everyone is invited? As long as that party has robots and rocket launchers, then I'm, yeah, I'm Kane. That's excellent. Thank you very much for your time today, Dave, and best of luck with the project. <laughs>